In this episode of SV Tenga, we welcome Andrew and Carolina's crew, explore some stunning beaches and towns, get cut off and almost have a crash, and accidentally pee on each other. Oh, nasty! <laughs> Last time, you guys saw us take a giant first step to begin our circumnavigation, an eight day, 1400 nautical mile, non stop sail from Gibraltar to Greece. We spent almost a week recovering and exploring Sakinta's town while waiting for our new crew to arrive. So that's one of the problems in Greece. We have someone leaving and they are lifting up. Oh, they got a passer anchor. A second ago. Well, no, it seems like they got my chain. The boatyard in Spain delayed our trip a bit, so we didn't have as much time to explore Greece as we would have liked to. Instead, we made a checklist of things we wanted to accomplish in our time here. Visit the site of the first Olympics. Visit Smuggler's Cove. Road through the famous Blue Caves. Find a real Greek party. Of course, enjoy cozy towns and restaurants. Don't crash or slam into the quay. Make amazing food aboard Tanga. Anchor in beautiful bays, crash a big fat Greek wedding, and finally, try local booze. Adventures are more fun with friends, so we were happy to welcome Andrew and Carolyn aboard. Both are from San Francisco, but Andrew's parents are Norwegian and Danish, while Carolyn's are French and Swedish. Our crew flags suddenly got a lot more colorful, and that's exactly how we wanted. And soon we were exploring the site where the first Olympics happened nearly 3,000 years ago. We were a cheap bunch, and the official guide wanted 200 euros for taking us around for about an hour. So we decided to pull up Wikipedia and have our only non native English speaker act as our unofficial free tour guide. We'll leave it up to you to decide if she was worth the money. So after completion, he walked a straight line for 200 steps. Are you listening? Yep. Yes, and then what happened? Ah, okay. after. The altars, uh, the sacred enclosures, which is daddy. Uh, and then came the Romans and stole everything. Everything. I don't know what they thought of the heat. They probably, well, they wore, didn't they wear sheets back then, Andrew? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, they had toga parties every day. Yeah. That and sounds I awesome. Every day in Greece is a toga party mm -hmm. back then. So time for some Aperol Spritz. Yeah, we deserve it after that. You always dreamed of this, me? Always. Always dreamed about this. Even though you heard about it like a week ago? The vessel Panagotius was on its way back from Turkey in 1980 when she hit Stormy Weather. She was suspected of smuggling cigarettes for the Italian Mafia, and while the Greek Navy pursued her, she went aground and lay here to this day. Look at that one. There's someone who feels sorry. You can see the engine here. Shipwreck Bay is a stunning location, but the shipwreck isn't the only thing that litters the beach. As with more and more beaches worldwide, plastic is part of the scenery. Even worse, Almost three quarters of the plastic in the ocean was probably collected on land, but dumped in the oceans afterwards. So the stuff we throw in the trash or recycling bin has a good chance of ending up in the ocean and on beaches like this. This made us realize that the solution isn't to put plastic in the right place, but we have to cut down on its use. So time for some Aperol Spritz. Yeah, we deserve it after that. The Blue Caves lay on the northwest corner of Zakynthos, and since I took the hard job of filming, Mia had to row for us. Tend to starboard. Going in the cave. Water like blue? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, watch out for the bats in front of you. Are the bats? Mm hmm. Where? I can hear them. We left our crew aboard while we went off to explore and were curious what trouble they were getting into when we were away from the ship. We imagined all sorts of things, but that couldn't prepare us for the reality. She's topless, at least. Is she topless? I can't tell. <laughs> I think she's topless. Jump! When we are near land, the stuff from the toilets are held in holding tanks. But that holding tank overflows over the side when it's full. Even if there is a swimmer in the water. Uh, paddling toward the bows. Oh, nasty! No! <laughs> That's not even funny! I know what that is. That is not great water. <laughs> so time for some Aperol Spritz. Yeah, we deserve it after that. After that experience, we decided to enjoy a different Colder yellow liquid. That? Oh. <laughs> Look at the smile on that face. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn and I heard the locals were throwing a party that night, so we had a few more beers to prepare ourselves for the cultural learnings. A bit hungover, we decided on a mid-sail swim. Some of us were a bit slower in getting in than others. Come on, just like, sorry, somebody get off the step. Just get in the water, dude. Get in your balls again. Okay, here goes. Isn't that horrible? Man. I can swim faster than your boat. Basically. Do a loop around. <laughs> I yeah. should do that. Can you clean out the through holes? I'll give you the grease gun. Okay. Squirt it in. Really? Can you go around the boat? Where the hell did I put that thing? We're close. Yeah. Yeah, we're pretty close to smashing into it. Have you extended it to that? Coming into busy Fiscardo, the port officials told us to med moor to the end of the quay, telling us we had plenty of depth. Luckily, the wind was blowing across the boat and I missed the intended spot by 30 centimeters, exactly the distance we had between the rudder and the rock that would have smashed it to bits. Anyone who knows me knows that I love water sports, but I rarely ever go for just a swim, unless there's something to do. After diving the rudder and checking the anchor, I decided it was safe enough, and we secured Tenga to explore what turned out to be one of our favorite towns in Greece. Piscado is popular and we didn't make a reservation, so we had to leave sooner than we wanted. But the Ionian coast is full of lovely towns and our next spot, Kioni, turned out to be almost better. To reward Scott for his rare swim, Carolyn and I decided to give him a proper welcome to Kioni to find a cozy restaurant. Watch out for the crab. <laughs> Uh, and then with it, maybe uh, 
de ça, c'est qui Man, that's a lot of seafood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no kidding, look at that. Well, the time for some Aperol Spritz. Yeah, we deserve it after that. Where are we going? Heading through Lefka's channel. It's kind of exciting. It's like five, uh, actually three point something meters right now. Uh, and in here, if you go off on the side, it's like a meter, meter and a half. You are keeping to your side of the channel, right? Huh? You are keeping to your side of the channel, right? I think the whole channel. Come on. They're both coming? Yeah. Oh, they can move. After moving to the right side of the channel for an overtaking boat, we find out that Greek boats sometimes don't follow the rules. See that? He's not right, dude. This is he's not he's a parking. Good he's parking. He's gotta go reverse. So just go to his bow. Man. Or what the? F what the? F he's out of the way. Yeah. Thank you. My propeller did not like that one. Maybe you look next time. You can look. Eyeballs. Yeah. What do you say? Yeah, well, well then you're very, then you're really not nice if you saw us. Now, welcome to Greece, huh? So time for some Aperol Spritz. Yeah, we deserve it after that. Narrowly avoiding that disaster, we made our way through the Lefkas Channel and out to the open sea. After looking at the wind forecast, we kept in mind our desire to sail more and motor less, so we headed for Antipaxis, 40 miles away. Pancakes while healing 15%. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a challenge? Not so much cooking it in this kitchen, this is a great kitchen for that, but eating it. <laughs> That's my sugar cinnamon. True right. Swedish. Is that a Swedish thing? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, Danes wouldn't do this? No. Then I'm just gonna roll it up. I learned that from my mom. So, bon appetit. <laughs> so time for some Aperol Spritz. Yeah, we deserve it after that. With a good 15 to 20 knot breeze on the beam, we put up all four sails and sped along at 8 plus knots towards Antipaxis. The combination of the pancakes and the exciting sailing was just too much for the girls. Caroline showing us all how napping is properly done and an amazing ability to sleep through a big winch being operated right next to her head. I did wake up eventually and enjoyed the second half of the sail and even took the helm as we approached our late lunch stop on Antipaxis. And steering, you know? Mm-hmm. Getting close to Antipaxis. Can we put on Celine Yang when we get it? Not a bad little spot.
the time for some Aperol Spritz. Yeah, we deserve it after that. After Antipexas, we went through a narrow, shallow channel and found ourselves in Gauss with another cultural learning surprise waiting for us. Unfortunately, we didn't get an invitation to the wedding. The end of the two weeks in Greece was coming too quickly, and we decided to have more meals aboard Tango. And finally opened up that bottle of Greek liquor that we've been told you either love or hate. Croatia, that's easy. Greece, too. There's always like old ladies with signs saying room at the airports, at the bus stations. Lovely. <laughs> you can like Chinese feel Chinese? it in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> Something I also worry about I going, like it a lot. going forward is. So, time for some Aperol Spritz. Yeah, we deserve it after that. We didn't want to leave Greece, and it didn't help that the experiences just got better and better. Look at this color. Oh, yeah. Look here. Carly, where are you at? Right here. Oh, girl. Oh. Ready? One, two, three. And which vintage is this? Um, La Sac vintage. Mmm, it's fine dining on La Tenga. Pizza! Oh my god. Which one? Is that me? Yes. Me? Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Holy shit, this is actually getting to be a lot of food. It's crazy how so little time has passed since we both decided to dive into this adventure, and now it's really happening. In less than six months, we made a plan, bought a boat, got her ready, and we just got to spend two weeks exploring the Greek islands with friends. Of course, things don't always work out perfectly. But very few good things come easy in life, it seems. We're sure the challenges will keep coming, and some will be so big that if we had known about them, we might not have started the trip. But then we have moments like this. It reminds us that it's definitely worth it, and more importantly, how lucky we are. The exciting or scary part, depending on your point of view, is that this is just the beginning. The whole world is literally ahead of us.